Yes, we have not changed our theme mm. song. That is right. Funny that. Well, funny that. Not because we can't, because I actually haven't found one that I love. Okay. Just like I love that one. Yeah. I don't I like it that much, to be honest. People love it. Welcome to Backchat. What do you think of that intro song, Hammer? Oh, I enjoyed it. Amish Bloody <laughs> Brayshaw's here. <laughs> yeah, didn't love it. Welcome. Thanks for having me back. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to you, mate. Yeah, no, thank you. What's going much. on? Nah, not a whole week, mate. Just cruising in from work, enjoying a tremendous shelter. I've, I've got to be honest. Extra pale ale at the moment. If anyone's working harder than Hamish Brayshaw at the moment, I don't know who he is. Oh, he's, no let's, let's let's talk about our day today. Okay. He's, he's filmed and recorded Shelter Footy Cast yes. off the top mm. morning, 7.45. Early morning, yeah. Gone mm. straight to work, soft 9 o'clock start, but yeah. for his employers, very hard 9 o'clock start. <laughs> yeah, and I, was, I was there at 8.50. <laughs> and no, I was not. has come straight from match committee yeah. into back chat in the evening. Very good. Working harder Thank than you, us. Anna. Yeah, book in the day in your garage. I tell you what, you're just making reputation stick. Yeah, I'll tell exactly you that much. Thank you kindly. Um, went to the Southern River Band Darkness. I started with this on the show of Footy Cast. If you didn't listen to that, I went to the great. Like, do you know who the Darkness is? We, no, I've we've established this, this haven't we? Yeah, I, uh, you no, don't. I haven't. I it don't was know. actually this morning we spoke about it. Yeah, I don't know. You would know. You would know one of the big hit. I believe in a thing called love. I believe in a thing called love. Yeah, yeah, I've heard, I've heard that song. yeah. There you go. that's, yeah, the, that's darkness. the darkness. Okay. So they played with the Shelter River Shelter. <laughs> Shelter River Band. Southern, Southern River Band. Band. Yeah. It's been a big weekend, you've got to be yeah. honest. We did that into the 92, 94, 06, 18 reunion at Ascot mm. Race Course. Mm. Yep. Um, that's why my voice is a little bit fatigued. It's come back since this morning a little bit. Yeah, I, I've got to be honest, during the middle of the day, was oh, in mate, big trouble. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Skull, I've, I haven't seen him in worse shape. Really? Oh. Do you have a kip? He was you've seen killed him. over. Yeah, seen him. <laughs> you've <laughs> seen me in worse shape. Yeah, no. A little lie down, an afternoon LLD. You see, my wife suggested that. What do you call an it? An afternoon LLD, a little <laughs> lie down. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a part of parcel of the Hamish Brayshaw routine? Yeah. What? Well, t- talking not, twenty well, minutes? No, nah, I don't. Well, I do it. I don't want to say I do it at work, but uh, you don't do it at work. No, I don't do it at work. But if I've got when you're a player, when well, you're a player, you have plenty of spare time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've got the afternoon off. I'll have a little kip, lie mm. down for half a. Beautiful. Is that prime time? Thirty minutes? Yeah, I'm a prime time. I'm a thirty minute guy. Lie down, hit the head, the head, head the pillow. Done. Thirty minutes up. The alarm hurts. As you can tell, we've got some new additions to back chat. We're going to have co-host here, Hamish Brayshaw, will be here. We've a little bit of stable of co-hosts coming through the doors, coming into summer. Exciting mm. stuff. Cricket's coming. whoop de freaking no. no, We're very happy about that. You are on back chat. Back chat double underscore on socials, Hamish. I know yep. you're following across oh, your social shit. podcast. Uh, hello at backchatpodcast.com.au is our email. <laughs> email. Email. I don't think I've ever stuffed that up. Backchatpodcast.com.au. You can go there, get all of our all our stuff. Patreon, merch is there. Yeah. Old episodes, new episodes, everything is there. You want it, you get it. YouTube, got to speak about this. Yeah. What have we done there? We've hit 5K subs, which is nothing to sneeze at. Um, oh, 5,000 subs is very good. Oh, yeah, God, it's yeah, huge. It's, it's bloody huge. So big thanks to everyone doing that. And if you're not subbed to YouTube, there's you know what? There's also stuff on there that's not Backchat. There's a little snippet of extra things that we do that we don't release as podcasts. So well, I yeah, I've got four YouTube accounts that I could probably sign them all up to. Four. Yeah, back in the day, you needed four. Uh, you needed so I already had one, yes. and I needed um, Candy Crush friend <laughs> requests, and so I added, I made a, a Gmail account to then go and make uh, to go and make Candy Crush, and I just thought, well, I'll just have a couple of different YouTube accounts while I'm at it because I come along with your Gmail. So you, that's for the extra lives on Candy Crush. Yeah, when because like you're a big Candy Crush. I was a big Candy Crush because what you had Still to do play? is like you had to send. No, I'm not doing it anymore. But you had to send friend request. Uh, sorry, you had to send Facebook requests, and like if you can get three friends to come and say yes, you can have free lives. You get an extra ten or whatever it is. Get an extra ten but minutes on the game. I just did it with a Gmail made three different Facebook accounts but along with your Gmail you get a YouTube account so I got a few so I will also say that we did hit 5k subs and I would say that there's a good chunk of those people that came in because of you because there you go we released a video about you talking about your brother being punched in the face by Andrew Gaff <laughs> yeah sorry. that was a good and that was no, our no, biggest sorry. that was our biggest video ever and we definitely got some subs from that so congratulations yeah, there you well, go. I'm sure Thanks. the Adzy one got a couple of laughs too that was funny yeah. Adzy got more laughs Shit than my heart yeah. out my ass. that was quite <laughs> 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 that's right the direct quote yeah, that was sorry cool. Candy Crush. Yeah. yeah. You just reminded me. Yep. Was your wife not the oh, yeah, so top she, 10 in the world? Yeah. You married? Yeah. She's got oh two goodness. kids. Well, there you go. I'm married for 10 years. <laughs> Shit. I'm 44. <laughs> oh no, I, God. Um, so Off my it. wife was, I think she was number one at one point, but she was definitely top five. One, number one what in the world? Pre or post kids? Uh, pre. Yeah. Yeah, you would have on, thought so. <laughs> but not on Candy Crush. Paper Toss. Do you remember Paper, paper Toss? Oh, too, I remember Paper Toss. Yeah. One like a duck swim in a circle? Yes, yes. I remember Paper Toss. She somehow oh mastered it and just got like thousands and thousands of tosses in a row. Wow. 
And she was number one in the world. Yes, in the world, internationally. Tell you what. That, <laughs> that's that, that rivals Robbie Nahas yeah. being in the top five in, in, in the world at, at FIFA. Oh, right. I yeah. thought you were going to say something else there. Yeah. Oh, dear. Can we? No, we nah. can't talk about that. Oh, Gatorade got- Nahas. I'll be for Patreon later. Gatorade bottle Nahas. Now, Patreon, thank you to our patrons. Mm. We will be sticking around for a bit of an after hours chat. It's like a bit like, bit like you know, Big Brother Uncut. Yeah. yeah. Back chat uncut Mixed for with Hot our, Dogs Game Show. For our oh, Hot Dogs. Shout out Hot Dogs. <laughs> Patreon. Uh, our patrons, our members over there, they get discounts to all of our supporters, all of our sponsors, who are Whippersnapper Whiskey, Margaret River Roasting Co., Blue Bet, Shelter Brewing Co. Oh, yeah, speaking of, Charlie, can I get another one of these, please? Very and good. The other, what are we at next? Uh, you're going to work through the entire range of Shelter and you're going to give us a review at the end of this podcast. I will enjoy that. And this one, Shelter, uh, the Extra Pale Ale, delicious and a tremendous whistle wetner. Well, okay. <laughs> whistle is off. wet. Yep. Uh, well, leadable cameras, Lydio down there on Oxford Street sorting us out with all our electronic gear and, of course, Ooh. Dean Bradley. Big announcement today with Dino. Mm-hmm. So we're going to stay tuned there. Dean Bradley Real Estate, Ray White, he's over there now. Jump on there, get your VIP code and discounts in that area. Now, let's get straight into it. Bit yep. of housekeeping, bit of a whip around as we usually do. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got to address something right off the bat. I've got to, this sounds I've got to ask a rumour that's been circulating. So I saw this on the run, Shade. Yeah, didn't want Don't to. know what it is. Yeah, so um, I, didn't, I didn't hear this myself, but Charlie, uh, Charlie's mum f- heard something on the radio. What's Charlie's mum's and- name? It's Jane. Thank, Jane. You, thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> Hello, Jane. Um, Jane was listening to the radio on uh, ABC. Right. right. And as you may have heard, Jeff Hutchison, the drive presenter, is retiring. Yes. Someone texted in saying, apparently, Will Schofield could be the next drive presenter for ABC Perth. Really? I wanted to check in with you if there was any truth to that rumour. This is the back chat rumour file. Yes. Because okay. you have been at the ABC before. I have. I've worked uh, on afternoons there. Yeah, um, hosted afternoons over summer. That's how we met. Yep. Worked breakfast with Russell Wolf mm-hmm. for quite some time. Mm. And I can't announce here, back chat, yep. that I may or may not be working in the, <laughs> the, the drive show on ABC. Wow. I, will, I will neither confirm or deny that. I'll say That's that. That's huge. I'll say yeah. that. Great. Yeah. That's all I wanted to all ask about. All but signed, sealed, and delivered, I would have thought, off the back of that response. Oh, absolutely not. I'm too busy here on back chat. No, that is but fair enough. That's right. why you're getting a plethora of co-hosts in. That's what, yeah. Oh, maybe onto something here, boys. Who knows? Jane could have been, you know, first to the... Ma- maybe it was Jane or Charlie or Dan that wrote that one in. I, a- I'm going to throw another one at you. Oh, great. Um, I love this. You host. <laughs> so, yeah, Will Schofield. Um, you've got a Wikipedia page. Why did you say Will Schofield? Because <laughs> I, I searched it up um, on Wikipedia right. and we found your profile. I want to read the last line of your bio. Of Can we intro. pull Hamish Brayshaws up at the same time? But yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll bring Hamish up too. Um, I should edit it. Last sentence of the intro bio. Schofield currently hosts the Backchat podcast with Correct. ABC producer Dan Const and appears on Fox Footy matches broadcast out of Perth. Um, so someone has added to your Wikipedia page. Was that you? No, it wasn't, but... I'm How also do you feel very about offended it? that I'm listed and labelled as ABC <laughs> producer Dan Cons. What, what would you like it to write? Like, what would you like it? Oh, your tombstone. What, is it? what do you want to read? Just, just Dan Cons is fine. Mm. Just don't give me a. Don't give. You don't me need a, a title. No. Nah. So what are you? Nothing. Just Dan Cons. Just Dan. Right. Yeah. Can we get Hamish's up while we're at it? Okay. I think it could be a Before good exercise. Before we do, as you're doing that, yes. we um, you can obviously edit Wikipedia pages. Well, yeah. I certainly haven't edited oh, that. No, I haven't. So I will say, mine. I don't have an underline on my name. There's no Wikipedia page for me. So Just if anyone cool. out there wants to make one, go for it. Please. Wow. Shout so out back chat listeners. Man, go for your fucking life. My old man played with a guy at North Melbourne called Dale Holmes. And I'm pretty sure Holmes only played the one game. And just a fantastic fellow, one of the great blokes going around and pissed in the spa one night at my house. Who we Dale talking, did? No, me, Angus, oh, and a guy so called Jack <laughs> Buckley. And we were just sitting there and Holmesy was in, inside, but we were in the spa all pissed. Love right. Holmesy. And uh, went on his Wikipedia page and edited it. And like <laughs> all his nicknames, we edited the Dale, Mystic Man, Holmes, the seventh wonder of the world, Holmes. <laughs> and so I'm not sure if it's still there or it's got changed. But his Wikipedia page read a whole lot of good things about <laughs> Holmesy one night oh, after a couple good. of beers in the spa. That is very Just good. So I'm I've special. got hammers up here. It's, it's a bit shorter than yours. Yeah, brother of. Longer than mine. Longer than mine. Um, about four or five pars. Um, played junior football with Hampton Rovers Football Club. The Mighty Rovers, um, yes, I do. Through school, Haleybury College. Haleybury College, yeah. Haleybury College. Haleybury College. Yeah, Haleybury College, the biggest school in the Southern Hemisphere. 
I believe. Brayshaw was again delisted Enormous. by the Eagles at the conclusion of the Hang 2020. On a what did that say? Say that again. <laughs> Brayshaw, this is so there's other stuff. Brayshaw was again delisted by the Eagles at the conclusion of the wrong. 2020 AFL season. Afterwards, he was signed as a waffle listed player at the West Coast Eagles yeah, really? and made captain of the club's waffle team for the 2021 that season. That should read Hammer retired at the end of 2020 <laughs> and decided <laughs> to come back and buy waffle. <laughs> All right, That's so we need uh, someone to fix that win, up, win, please. Win a couple of best and yeah. fairest. And, oh, I would ask, as well, while we're on the Hamish Brayshaw story, yep. we haven't really touched on it over at Shoulder Footy Cast. Nah. Second in the Sandover. Yep. Best Thank and you. fairest. Yep. Is that your second best and fairest or nah, first? first? Mate, how's well the done. year you've had in the waffle? Yeah, pretty handy. Oh, I didn't mind it. One of the bloody waffles best. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Did, did you think you were going to win it coming, coming into the best and fairest? Uh, the best and fairest, I thought I was a good chance. Perfect, yeah. great. I, um, <laughs> I didn't want, so it was funny. I was playing golf with Angus the week before because I was in Melbourne. Name drop. Name drop. Angus Brayshaw, brother of. I'm sure it says it on the Wikipedia. <laughs> and uh, and playing golf. I hadn't had 30s. I'd been playing shit house golf. Haven't had th- For anyone who plays golf. Did you play golf? Yeah. I haven't had thirty. <laughs> Doesn't fuck. I haven't had thirty six points in a while, which is means you're playing to your handicap, and that's that's good. What's anyway, your handicap? My handicap's uh, it was seven, and now it's blown out to about ten. So I haven't played to my handicap that's in a long time. Has. I've been playing poorly. Anyway, I am riding the wave of emotion, and I'm coming home strong. I need a bogey on the last to have thirty six points, which is one over par. Smack my drive, hit my second shot on the grain. I've got three putts to have thirty six points for the first time in what would be. Three months. Yes. Walk into the green and I say, Dad says, you only need a three putt to get 36. And Angus chimes in and says, don't go the early crow because the crow wields power, mm. which is something that Charlie Spargo at Melbourne has said to him. Don't go the early crow because the crow wields power. Charlie Spargo, a philosopher or something? He is. must be. Frederick, uh, Nietzsche or something. Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I uh, have gone on to four putt and have 35 <laughs> points. Absolutely butcher it. Shit the bed. And so the leak week leading up to the BNF, Angus was like, you know, you're, you're a good chance. You get your speech ready. And I kept saying, oh, I don't want to go the early crow because the crow wheels power. <laughs> so, uh, no, I, I thought I was a sniff, but didn't want to uh, didn't want to sing it early. And what about the Sandover? Nah. Getting excited? Were you getting excited? I mean, oh, I was. You came out hot. Yeah, I was pissed. I had no idea. So I did not think, like I, in after the fact, I got three votes in a game. We lost to 50 by 50 points to Claremont. Shouldn't have got three Impressive. votes Impressive. Did. Got two votes in a game. We lost to Peel by 70 points. Shouldn't have got two votes there. I remember two that votes. game. There was a game against West Coast where I had I kicked three goals but only had 20 touches. And Angus Schumacher had 39 and kicked two. And he got one vote and I got three. <laughs> is, he, is he playing in the back line? No. Nah, midfielder, through a midfielder. Yeah. midfielder. So there were a couple of games where I was like, I didn't expect to get that yeah. many votes and I've got three, two and three. So well, You were leading at one stage, right? I was 19 votes through the first 10 rounds, had five best ons in the first half of the year. <laughs> and I was, I'd had a few, plenty of drinks beforehand, didn't expect, I, I thought I'd poll a few, but like to the point where I could happily get pissed and enjoy the night. And so halfway came around and I am legless, sitting there just thinking I am not in any position to say anything and like just as the, the votes kept coming and I'm sitting there just oh my god so you were thinking go blame Bokhorst go blame Bokhorst so halfway comes around Jackson Ramsey's on our tables gets a waiter over get, get us around a mimosas and I'm sighing in a minute no worries <laughs> mimosas sipping on a mimosa and just watching me get votes and votes something if I have to get up here I'm gonna make an idiot myself wow Luck, well, not luckily. I would have enjoyed. Would have been nice it, to win the yeah, sandover. Would have been nice to win the sandover, but uh, no, I uh, I got to enjoy a few more. It is a pleasure to be in your company. Mm, I tell mm, you what, greatness. certainly. I think I called one time on this show that I was going to win the sandover. Yeah, didn't win it. Didn't even get close. <laughs> I think I got two votes. <laughs> Most I've ever gotten in any season. Now uh, I want to move on. McDonald's monopoly. We threw this out to yeah, our listeners did. last week. Had some replies. Yeah. Um, I got to be honest. I thought we'd have someone that knew something. Had a bit of something, right? Yeah. So someone commented on TikTok, where you know that's where the masses are. Mm. Yeah. Said I was a manager at Macca's when a customer won a car. That's pretty good. And then well, we got. Do you think that's? Do you think that's bullshit? No. Do you think that's true? If you no, that's a manager at Macca's trying to promote people to come to McDonald's Monopoly. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I, I agree. So like, if you're you're not staying in Macca's and then you, you've got your yeah, it used to be like physical sticking them on a Monopoly map. Like, yeah, you're not that. pulling them into like the that. store. Oh my god, I want a Magna. No, not going to happen. No well, way. Well, funny you say that because oh, no. we got another comment that said one of my friends won a Mitsubishi Magna back in two thousand and four. <laughs> oh <laughs> boy, two thousand four. Yeah. Oh mate, it's been going, going for a long been time. Going for that long. Yeah, it's yeah, been going for a long since, time. Yeah. So okay. No. Uh, well, I'd still like to leave it out. Have you ever? Well, I, no, I listened to last week's and I've never won anything more than some fries and a coke. Yes. But and but again, like looking at it, I'm sure I've seen enough of what is it? You got to win. You got to get three 
Well, not two on like Mayfair and yeah, Park Lane. But like I get them and if they're not anything instant, I just throw them away. So you could be throwing away cars. I could be throwing away cars. But what I did used to do, and sorry McDonald's if you are listening, I um, sure used to go with mates when you'd have someone driving and you'd just sit in the back. So mum, my mum drove a Tarago, which is three deep. So yeah, if okay. you're right in the back, you're too far away from the front of the counter. And what you do is you just go online and Google Big Mac Monopoly and just like hold your phone out and say, yeah, mate, up the back, just a Big Mac. And he'd scan the people at the front to make sure, but it, he's not going to reach in the car and pull you in. So, yeah, okay, no worries, Big Mac. Just had a Big Mac quarter pounder and just <laughs> he's all of a sudden giving us Cash six you. burgers oh, in the back. So you just take a couple of screenshots on Google and roll through. The Brayshaw boys. Yeah. Thieves. <laughs> Thieves. Thieves. Thieving from That's McDonald's. Page, Can you right? give us a chess update, please, Dan? Yeah, We've been Gukesh following this very D. closely. Yeah, Gukesh D. Um, Gukesh. So is it a DJ? Not, yeah, that's not his real name. That's a, that's a that's name a, that everyone knows him by. Stage name. His full Paul name Sunday. is way too long, and I'll butcher it, so I'm not going to say it. Gukesh D, 16 years old, has recently just beaten world champion Magnus Carlsen. Knocked off Magnus. Magnus Carlsen is the this guy. This is the guy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hans Neiman beat him as well, and then he said, no, Hans was cheating. Um, anal he's beads walking out. And it, pardon? Potentially had anal beads. Right. Uh, vibrating to tell him we had to move. Um, but. Magnus has been beaten again by Gukesh D. How old was Gukesh? 16. 16. See, Magnus Carlsen knocked off Gary Kasparov at 13. So 16's a bit... I think it's a bit of a late comer onto the scene. No, Magnus was the super kid in chess. Yeah, he was. Sounds yeah, like you've been following chess <laughs> very closely. I'm a Magnus guy. Yeah, well, yeah, there so, we go. So, so Magnus has, has lost to a 16 year old. Yeah, so. Has he cracked the shits with this one or not? No, he hasn't. Gukesh is clean. He looks like a clean dude. Apparently, they're doing body scans. They're doing pat downs and body scans coming into chess tournaments now. Wow. Yeah, like the old, you know. Uh, I don't know what, what they're doing. What a world we live in. Hey? Yeah, correct. Um, now, uh, I want to show this one to get your first reaction. I don't think you would have seen it. Uh, we've got a little bit of new technology here at Backchat. We're able to show you and get a nice reaction. This Beautiful. is just a photo. Someone sent this into us. Uh, Carla Pritchard underscore. Shout out underscore. This has come in. She's no, gone and no, got this no, on her arm. No. Can you tell me what you think about this tattoo? It's a shocking way to spell Brayshaw 22, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it is red and Red and eight. R E double D E N eight. Oh my goodness. So I've spoken to Jack. It is not Jack. It is it is neither Jack's mother, Jack's partner, sisters, no relation. None of his kids. No, no kids. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Now yeah. uh, start for a phone my number. Goodness, Red man. and eight on the on the arm. It's just there you go. I've got it to say, Carl. Well. It does yeah. look fresh, doesn't it? Yeah. I I I'm gonna say it's quite dreadful. We did send it to Jack who said it it has made my day. Very good. Not much makes Jack say now that he's retired. <laughs> a bit sad. <laughs> mm. um, Discord. Yeah. Okay. So, Discord. i got to ask first. So, we on. usually go through off the top, right? Mm-hmm. Instagram. Yep. TikTok. Twitter. Yep. YouTube. One. Listen to us wherever you listen to us as a podcast. Like, they're all our things, right? Mm-hmm. Then we did Reddit. We're still doing Reddit. Still Reddit, doing yeah. Reddit. Things happen at Reddit. Do you know what happens over at Reddit? Yeah. Probably. I don't. Now there's Discord. There's back chat, Discord? back chat Discord. Yeah, I've been on Discord before. Jump online, play League of Legends with my mates and put Discord on and talk. What's your user on League of Legends? Can't remember what it was. I haven't played I've for about seven what, years. Sorry, who, no one cares. What's Discord? Anyway. Okay, so <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Discord is essentially a little chat. I want to say chat room because there's more chat room. There's like lots of rooms. Uh, it's like a house. It's like mm. chat hotel. Mm. And you there's like different channels and a lot of people use it for gaming. So instead of like, remember, you play Call of Duty, right? And then yeah. you jump into a party on Call yeah. of Duty and that's how you can talk to one another. Yes. This way, everyone jumps on Discord and you're all just on Discord and you can talk to each other. You don't have to wait till like the game starts before you can chat to so each other. So you like mute up on your, on your yeah, yeah. game and then yeah, you, you just get like, the audio you push through. You to talk on yep. the game so that you can talk to people. But all your mates right. jump on together and... What does that have to do with back chat? We have nothing Someone to do Someone has gaming. made... So a lot of people do it now. You make your own Discord, Discord. page or Discord room. Mm-hmm. And now people that listen to back chat and game can like go in and like join up together to play games. There's like, like a like community in there. It's a community Discord in there. community. We currently have about 35 members. 35. So they're playing games and listening to back chat at the same time. Yeah. You could, but you could like put like announcements. Some people have... Like I've been posting when we do new episodes. What are other people doing? I don't care what you're doing. What are other people doing in there? What are they talking about? 
boys, I'm playing some um, oh, this and that. They're like teaming they're up. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Back I'll, chat. I'll, I'll jump on Overwatch too. Yeah, okay. I was. I thought I was going to tee off about Discord. And be like, no, we're not doing that no, shit. No, no. That sounds elite. So yeah. the people are jumping in. You're a big vo- Call of Duty guy. Chats. You'd love Absolutely. <laughs> I love Discord. <laughs> so if Discord. they were like, hey, Scoey's jumping on Call of Duty, everyone would yeah, jump on. I've, yeah. I've asked Dan like 10 times to explain what Discord is. The best he could do was it's sort of like WhatsApp and it's like a bit of audio. I've and a bit. never, I've never like, said you, that. You've never said what you've just said. It sounds amazing. Yeah, so someone um, set it up for us. Right. Well, there you go. Uh, a Click listener. Discord. Message, I got a message one day on Twitter. Hey, man, does Backchat have a Discord? I said, no, it doesn't. I use Discord a lot. And he's like, leave with me. 45 seconds later, I check. <laughs> There's a whole thing set up. Bang. There's like 30 people in there. He's like, admin. Is there an admin? I am, yeah. yeah. Oh, he, he he moderates. He's a moderator. Moderator, moderator, moderator that's what he is. Yeah. There you go. And I'm the owner of it, but but he is the Huge. moderator. And he's mm-hmm. welcoming people in. Very good. Love to be added in. Um, yeah. Any favourite... Usernames in there? Or? Um, there was someone I pl- so I played some Rocket League with someone. You don't read this, Jesus You were going all over the place. Uh, Rocket League. You played Rocket League? I have. Yep. I played along with someone. Um, Hamish was their username. Okay. Uh, the person's real name is not Hamish. There you go. Uh, he began to tell me that one time he was on a Twitch streamer's yep. chat room. Mm-hmm. He was a Melbourne fan. Mm. And he was talking about Angus a lot. He was, you know, yep. brother, of, brother of, brother of, brother of, yep. of. obviously. And yeah, this guy uh, writes in the chat, goes, who's the best Brayshaw? Yeah. And Duh. he replies with, Hamish Bra- is the best Brayshaw. No question. So he changes his <laughs> username to Hamish Brayshaw. So now his gamer tag on all of his games is Hamish. Hamish 22? It, no, I checked. I thought it was Hamish 22, but he, mm. it was Hamish Brayshaw. He's using his gamer tags for Hamish <laughs> Brayshaw because you're the best Brayshaw. Why couldn't he keep that? Well, it could be. Apparently, that. it was cleaner with just Hamish. So no, yeah, it's Hamish. cooler. Just Hamish. Hamish. I really like it. <laughs> Same. Very yeah, good. I like that guy. Shouts out! To, shout out to the Discord community. If you want to join it, just message us. There's been mm. some shout outs. Today. I think we need to wrap them up. There's been a lot of shouting mm. out, and we're not even up to the Senate. We're ready. <laughs> Grand final mascot competition. Here's the winner. Grinder wins. 62, 38 <laughs> percent. Grinder. The Frio Docker beats. <laughs> Uh, Mosquito bomber, yeah. Reynolds Bomber mm-hmm. 62% to 38% We will be announcing the winner During the week On social media I believe yes. we're going to announce it In a separate clip Sure Because we couldn't get it all together For this episode yeah, the But there will pack. be a winner mm-hmm. Of the backpack The backpack It's a back chat pack But yep. taking the uh, chat mm-hmm. out Of course Backpack Sponsors We're putting a house in there From Dean Bradley We've got, <laughs> we got, we got Blue Bat money coming in We've yep. got Leadable right. cameras, cameras in there, may or may not include any of those items. Yes. Big backpack. <laughs> Terms and conditions, please apply. Now, last one for the content section. I want to show you boys something. All right, social media. We all do it. We all browse it. I'm a very much a browse, browse, browse. Not a lot of actual emotion. Not a lot of physical awesome. emotion. It's almost like a mind blank for me. I just like scroll through. I don't don't really like or react to anything. I just look. Yeah. I was on there this today. Came across a clip that I. I out loud laughed a lot. I, I was borderline <laughs> crying is, yeah. I, by myself. You were lolling. That's a rarity, I think. I've, I'm pretty similar. I can scroll and just look at things and like I can watch comedy and not a lot bit audibly of a makes me laugh by myself. Were you by yourself? Yeah. Nothing, not a lot audibly makes me laugh on my own. Correct. So this did, I want to show it to you both. I've probably, I, I guarantee, I, I know, I know. So just, yeah. just watch it, right? Okay, let's watch it. Hopefully there'll be some audio of some description. There is, yeah. And I want you to react to it. Okay, sure. so let's go. Man pushing girl up escalator currently. Reverse Little trip. <laughs> Big trip. So he's running up the opposite direction of the escalator and he's trying to get to the top. <laughs> They're trying to drag him. Drag the cunt is the words from the rest of the footy fans. <laughs> so there's now a second man and he makes it up. Man from the very beginning of the clip is still on the escalator. He's about to get up. Oh, he's been he down it. again. He's been putting in the work. Oh, he's given up. 
<laughs> it goes to the very bottom of the escalator. <laughs> I'm I sorry. That's very good. Dad's not laughing. <laughs> 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 <That's> <laughs> not. <laughs> Dad, look, when Dad, he's just <laughs> defeated on the side rail. <laughs> so, going back to the So bottom. for those not watching along, oh. please jump on our YouTube and have a look. So basically it's an old man pushing up a woman up an escalator. They're in the middle of two other escalators going in the opposite direction. Mm. Right? The escalators are going up. The one he's running up is going down. <laughs> and he's at the top step about eight <laughs> times and he trips over and by the end of the clip uh, Dan's still not laughing yeah. he falls down the entire yeah. steps oh. like the only thing I can equate it to oh. is like you remember it was like the final <laughs> level of gladiators and you had to you. run up the mate the travelator mate the travelator. don't travelator. pretend like you don't know what that was the travelator yeah. it's the greatest thing ever yeah, oh, it's time for this you send it we read it I need to compose myself a little bit. There you go. You send it, we read it. You send in emails, we read them out. There's no doubt about it. Hello at backchatpodcast.com.au. You want to send us something, what will we do, Hammer? Well, we'll read it. Thank you very no much. question about it. Mentioning um, leadable cameras in store, right? So leadable cameras, this is what you send it, we read it to, is brought to you by. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Backchat in any leadable camera store. And when I say any, I mean <laughs> the leadable camera store. You say yeah. Will Schofield sent you. You get 20 bucks off, Hammer. Do you really? Yeah. He, I know where you're going after yeah. this. It could still be open, actually. They do everything. They do, cam they do cameras. They, <laughs> you've had a big day. I reckon you need to go to bed yeah. and then you can go to leadable cameras. They do cameras. They do lighting. You know what they do. I say this every time. But they're good mm. Good people in there. Go see Lydia. He'll sort you out with all the gear that you need. The reason I'm rushing a little bit is... Got a few emails to get through this week. So, Dan, the test is you as Hammer finishes off his Charlie, sour. Have, yeah, the sour. Summer Excellent. sour. The summer sour, 375 mil, alcohol 4%. Delicious. You've uh, you've gone that number two, so you're happy to start on the beer and then transition to the sour. A little bit uh, yeah, sweeter. Yeah, well, perhaps. I mean, Charlie's bringing it to me. I'm up to, I'm left to his devices. Charlie's but, a um, bartender as well. Mm, that was excellent. Thank you, you Charlie. Thanks, Very good. Charlie. What have we Thank got here? I thoroughly enjoyed that one. I've got the Trail Pale. That's okay. what I'm drinking. 5.7%. A bit more of a heavy hitter. You send it, we read it. It's brought to you by Leadable mm. Cameras, not Shelter. Mm. Now, let's start. Tom. G'day, lads. Bit of a long one here. Thank you, Hamish. Seeing as the AFL seems to want to somewhat Americanize the game, yet their efforts are poor and not within the average footy nuff's interest, I propose a small yet simple way which I think would increase merch sales and make wearing it less cringe to wear team gear to games, which, as I understand, fellow Perth potter Josh Gallup despises. Yes, as do I. Yes. Yeah. Do you wait, to games? To game. Oh, not, not to games. Just Don't out and about. Yeah, you can't wear it to the supermarket. Yeah. No. Thank you. You cannot. Okay. Thank unless you. you're 10. I think we're going to touch on so this, this issue a little bit this later is, on. This is Tom's uh, suggestion. <laughs> yeah, Simply ten, put fair. players' names on the back of Guernseys, like NBA jerseys, and make a long sleeve similar to hockey jerseys. Some may hate this idea, but quite frankly, it's better to, de better to see someone wearing a long sleeve JK17 kit instead of the fat bogan just wearing a skin tight <laughs> regular Guernsey <laughs> and no shirt underneath. Or imagine the amount of. Uh, Buddy Franklin kids uh, there would have been in the crowds for its a thousandth goal True. Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion the AFL has a long way to go in terms of merch and people being socially accepted to wear it in public another point being retro sports apparel is highly sought after and is a missed opportunity by the AFL Agreed. Yep. I like traditional aspects of the game e.g. the grand final belongs at midday but this area is something that should change and I will debate it and the capital will yeah Capital Hence letters. why I said will. Yes. That was how excited I got. Thank you. Um, apologies. I hope this wasn't beyond Dan's capability to read aloud. You actually did quite well. Yeah, very well. That's probably your best read email I've ever heard. Bit of a weird throwaway with the grand final at midday. Yeah. <laughs> to do with anything apparel. <laughs> the grand final doesn't start at midday. Yeah. I mean, it's in Perth, maybe. Yeah. But like, it's a grand final yeah. two, two, grand 220, final 240. I could have understood. Yeah, correct. Yeah. But anyway. uh, apart from that... I agree with this. Yeah, couldn't agree more. I actually haven't thought about that before. Like the the jumper, the AFL jumper, which is behind me, they're not they're wearable. They're not designed like singlets. To, yeah, they're not designed to be worn yeah, out and about. Need a t-shirt underneath. And bintang like You've at been the to bottom America, of it. Like I've got yes. NFL jerseys. I got an uh, I got an ice hockey one. Arizona Coyotes. Even the and NFL just, ones. Yeah, like you can wear them around. Yeah, they they're have cool sleeve t-shirts. Mm. Why do they not polos. exist? What about team polos? They're shocking, mate. Team no one wears polos. They don't have they don't have team polos in America. Yeah, right. They have. No, no. Why don't we have these? Mm. Well, there's a there's a market for it. Let's contact here. Yeah, three people, yeah. <laughs> at least three people. Damo's Kane, Charlie, oh, Charlie Kane. Oh, oh, you, you got a mic over there. You can say what's up. It's okay. No, thank you Damo, very much. Damo to turn me up. Yeah, I'm Kane. I would okay. absolutely wear yeah, one. Absolutely. Okay. Oh. Okay. Come sit down, please, Damo. What do you got here? Hang on a minute. What are you? Oh, that is beautiful. That's big old Dallas Cowboys. 
puffer jacket. Luxury design puffer jacket. It's How about ve- them cowboys, eh? That's go. very so nice. Get me a, like get to a be retro honest, design. I have a West Coast one of those. Yeah, retro design. Oh. Yes, perfect. Yes, like they it. sold them, and I bought it as soon as I saw it. Why don't they have more retro stuff? Yeah, that's an interesting. Free release re- retro stuff. They bought a hundred of them and sold. Imagine out Imagine if West seconds. Coast put the retro West Coast jumper out. It would get cleaned out. Yep. Imagine if they released the ochre. The orca, whatever it is. Yeah, the orca. Okay. Imagine if they released it in t-shirt or long sleeve form. Yeah, 100%. I'd buy it. Shut up and take my money. It's not about being too hot here. Anyway, we've probably spent too long on that. Um, yeah. Hatter, new new email. And it's not the longest email we've had uh, we've got today, Tom. So don't stress too much about being long. Hatter. Lads, Todd here. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, hope the fillet o- the fish o fill oh see that racks me. Hope the fish o fillets are treating you well. Just kidding, we all know they are fucking shit. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> uh, was ah, that's it for a matter. <laughs> Good <laughs> was, on you. Tony. Was running if you'd be able to get a coach or list manager on the show to discuss the trade and draft period. No um, player specifics. Just what the process looks like. Ultimately, who is responsible for the trade slash draft period? Um, does the coach have final say, or is it mostly the list manager? Does the coach staff get together? and decide what type of players the club needs. Do they know on draft night who each club is going to draft? Lots of questions here. Love the pod, guys. Keep crushing. Uh, P.S. Will, has anyone ever told you that you look similar to Isaac Butterfield? Slash, and is he a future guest? I've got a picture. Do you know what Isaac Butterfield looks like? Yep, I do know Isaac Butterfield. Yeah, cool. Yep. Look he's, a, he's a very look conservative like? comedian. Are, are you being sarcastic? No, like oh, genuine conservative. Like conservative comedian. What's a conservative comedian? Conservative is like very old school right. opinions and nice. views on things and... Huh. Mm. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'll take that. He's quite a nice looking man. We are going to have a. Um, I think we're going to have a player agent soon at some point. Player agent. We're going to try and grab. Yeah, we're yeah. going to have a big player agent here in Perth. Um, so I think he, he'd, he'd be able to answer some of it. I mean, some of the stuff at Clubland. I know, know for a fact the recruiters are a big time in charge of it. Yes, the head coach gets some say, but most head coaches take a back seat mm-hmm. and they just deal with the players they get. They, they may have, okay, we need a Ruckman. Yeah, I feel like that's the head coach's role. Like, but this is what I'm dying for. Yes. Sort me out. Correct. Not, um, oh, we've got a Ruckman. I've been watching um, a Jagger Jang in, in for East mm. Perth and I, I want this person. You know. Perth Wouldn't now? the coaches Sorry. get fired way more often because they're like making that. decisions that can... Well, like the, 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 the coaches don't have any, they're not watching players during the year. They're, yeah, no, they're, they're coaching, coaching the team. The, the recruiting staff are doing that. So... Um, it's a good, good shout though, mm-hmm. very much. Um, Joe Kenny, roaming back chat Melbourne. Hi, uh, back chat industries, PTYLTD. Do you want to say something before I read it? So up? I believe the next few emails um, did a bit of a shout out to applications for back chat, uh, yep. roving reporters on a sport. Sure. Footy's finished. We're going to get into a period of time where footy fans need stuff to watch, stuff to follow. I'm not a massive expert on many other sports. I like my NFL, but mm-hmm. I gave a shout out to our listeners. Do you want to apply for positions that don't exist? Do you want to be a roving ex reporter? Of course. Well, we've had some applications. Hello. About to get some. Joe Kenny. So Joe Kenny says, I'm emailing in regards to your roaming back chat inquiries. I live in Richmond Terrace, a street less than ten minutes walk from the MCG, Tennis Centre, Amy Stadium, Punt Road Oval, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Good location. I do Great not have location. sophisticated camera equipment. However, I do have a very dry sense of humour, wit, and experience doing interview-based comedy bits in high school. Love it. If you're interested in me walking over to the Test Cricket, Big Bash, Sheffield Shield, soccer, swimming, whatever, I would love to contribute. Please let me know if you'd like more information. Joe Kenny. Joey's done a great job at bigging himself up, hasn't he? But I think, personally, just my initial thoughts on Joey. Wow. Anyone who comes out and says... I have really good experience of being funny and doing little <laughs> interviews. Come on. <laughs> Not happy with Joe's application. Oh, Joey. <laughs> I'm going to take Joe's application on board. Of course. I, well, believe, I believe he's pitching to be a Melbourne version of Charlie. Yep. By the sounds of things. <laughs> okay. Look, if we could fly Charlie over to Melbourne every week, we would, Charlie. I can Coach see you Roll twitching in a chair over there. there. What are you going to say? Well, maybe you should be the man to decide if we can you know, take Joe's application on board. Joe would love to have you on board. Thank you very much, oh, Charlie. Oh, Hired. Oh, oh, oh. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Charlie's. <laughs> I fucking love it. That's good. Charlie, the boss of oh, roaming yeah. back good chat. Joey. There we go. Raj <coughs> Ruparelia. Hey, boys. I think I've done well there. Why would you now speak we, like? Why would you speak like hey me? Hey, boys, because that's how I am. That's how I imagine he's, he was writing it. Big Eagles fan and cheers for a ripper performance in 2018 against the Pies. Going one it? of the best days of my life with my mates, all Eagles fans, and I have you particularly to thank for it. It'd be worrying if <laughs> Meg Pies support had the best day of their life. <laughs> 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 Just uh, watch so, the losing grand final. So Raj is writing in to apply for a position as a cricket 
and or NBA correspondent for Backchat. Mm. Well, you can't have both. No, okay. One or the other, Raj. Uh, just listened to your podcast for Tuesday, 11th of October, and heard you were hiring, so I wanted to put my name up for two sports I love the most alongside footy. Uh, here are some respective reasons I believe I could manage both if required, or at least one of the two. So I, got my cr- I got my critical hat on for okay, Raj so here. But you, you, you can be Mr. Criticism. It's sure. for cricket. Okay. I've played all my life, including uh, having played representative cricket in Perth. I've captained sides all throughout my career and even played with and against current Australian and state cricket team members. I'm saying this because I hope it demonstrates my excellent understanding of the game. It does. I back is. my cricket IQ up <laughs> um, there with the bets of them and, under, and understand the game well. And even though I'm sure there's a million people wanting to be the cricket correspondent, no. Yes. I feel no, my under- is. <laughs> yes. I feel my understanding of the game is greater than ninety nine percent of people considering how much I've played and watched. All right, before we get to NBA, give us a summary of how you're feeling about Raj at the moment, Hamish. I feel like there's a there's a pinch of arrogance about Raj. <laughs> there's a pinch of arrogance about him that look, initially I was a bit off it. But uh, put you around he captaincy, brought, he, he, cap- captaincy. Throw, captaincy. Throwing some name dropping around. The name dropping was what threw me off. Right. But the confidence in his ability to first of all throw shade at the fact that there's a million people applying for the role, and he's, and he's like better that. than ninety nine percent of the million. The ninety nine percent I like. Mm-hmm. I'm, off, I'm You know what? I've come around to Raj. He threw me off to start with, but reeled me back in. Well, so just, just wait. You're only halfway through. Here's the NBA Let's application from yeah. Raj. I know. So this is the NBA. Bit. I know Dan has some uh, some understanding. Of NBA, including his new endeavour to break away from you, Scoey, with his basketball podcast, which you can listen to every Wednesday evening. Back really? Basketball show. Right. Um, Should we, can we just spend a tiny bit of time on that? I know you. Yeah, yeah, you can. Um, Greg Hire. Greg Hire, myself and Ben, we host it every Wednesday. Uh, Greg Hire absolutely will be teeing off this week on the decision to uh, suspend Jesse Wagstaff for potentially two games for setting a screen on someone. Have you seen this? You seen the screen? No. Can we show him? Let's, do you want to do it now in, in this email? Let's we'll do it now. We don't have to. We can do it no, later. Let's just, let's just do it now. Yeah. I'm going to show you this um, I'm going to show you this video hammer. Yep. Um, we'll get back to you, Raj. Yeah, we'll, we'll get, get back, back to you. To so Raj. Jesse Wagstaff is about to inbound the ball and sets a screen on Melbourne player Lachlan Barker. Here he goes. Bang. Oh, yeah. Drove the Dame Nelly Melbourne straight into him. <laughs> Don't mind that. What have we got another angle here? Bang. Uh, yeah, we can slow it down because there's a bit of a play here. Here we go. Go back. Let's go back a bit. So he got concussed. Okay, well, get up first of all. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's, Hammer. Oh, seriously. He's just standing there, is he not? Here we go. Row up, Barker. That is... Bit of carry on. There's bugger all in that. So, Side ball for mine. Here we go. There's one more slow-mo. Okay, he throws. There's a yeah, shoulder a bump in. Lean in, but that's that's common. Is there? That's well, common. Plenty, plenty of. Plenty so of it's gone in. to the MRP of the MBL. They've given MRP, match, the Mineral Resources Park, or the MRO. <laughs> match review match panel. Review panel. Isn't MRP. that the MRO now? Did I say MPR? No, I said MRP. MRP. No, MRO is match review officer, and it goes to the MRP. match review. Yeah, I think I've so. just come from MRP, Mineral Resources Park. Very good. I'm thinking. So Very they've good. given him two weeks with an early plead, uh, early guilty plea t- to knock it down to one week. And they're challenging. Are they? Yes. Okay, there you go. Take so it, Take it, Jesse. <coughs> Jesse Wagstaff, I'm going to show you another clip. Sure. Because we've got another one. Jesse Wagstaff sets another huge screen on Josh Childress, who used to play in the NBA. Of when did this happen? This is years ago, four years ago, I reckon. Point sets out, Jesse. Oh, yeah, there he is. There you go. So Saw watch that. Jesse Wagstaff here. Which one is Jesse? Thanks. Oh boy! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I just want to get a bit of that India. <laughs> so Childress again gets a set, a screen set on him. Oh yeah, Bang, that's that's him down. He's that's clean, mm-hmm. absolutely clean. Childress, no. Nah, Moose. He's I'm all for that. Childress <laughs> got a week for that. <laughs> one week. I'm all for it. He got a week, which is which is. He fine. shoulder charged somebody. He yeah, shoulder charged yeah. someone, and Wax off is getting potentially the same. Um, for that. So, anyways, okay. we're going to be talking. Tune about in to Backchat Basketball. It's on its own feed. You can find that on Spotify, on Apple, wherever you find your yep, podcast. But it's on its own feed on YouTube as well. Mm-hmm. You got to search for Backchat Basketball to find it. Yep, sure. Subscribe there. Uh, okay, so let's go back to Raj. Uh, he's been watching the. He's been watching and following NBA regularly for years now, and in his uni days, watch games daily during the season. Mm. Now with work, I struggle to watch as much as I used to, but always watch highlights, listen to podcasts about the game, and challenge you to find a recent topic in the NBA that I don't have knowledge about. (laughs) My mates and I all play fantasy NBA and have been into it for years. And I don't mind a flutter on the game too. Flutter? Exclusively through Blue Bet, of course. Oh, wow. I know the game as I follow it so religiously and have played a few years of social basketball at Warwick and Craigie Leisure Centre. Yes. I think we probably played each other, Raj. Put itself right to the top. Um, Look forward to hopefully accepting one or both of these roles 
and the many chats we will have about NBA and cricket. Cheers, oh, Raj. What about Raj's NBA portion, Hamish? All right, Raj. I'll be perfectly honest with you, mate. Your cricket pitch was tremendous. It was right up there, 99th percentile. You have, uh, you've come out and just said you're a fan of basketball. Come on, Raj. There's a billion fans of basketball, mate. You're not, and you're not setting yourself a light playing at Warwick and Craigie. You're kidding yourself, Raj. One one job. I think he's in line for the cricket one. Yeah. Okay. I haven't heard a better application for that. No. But uh, we'll have to get through the other million that we're working through. <laughs> yeah. But potentially. No, well, I enjoyed that. That was a bit of humour throwing a bit of shade on the. Uh, uh, but you know what, Raj? That's a good pitch. Your basketball one, just being a fan. That ain't good. Did you used to play at the Warwick Centre? Yes. Yeah, well, one, hang on a minute. Won a championship so, at the Warwick Centre. I didn't oh, ask that. If you won a championship, Raj, that would have been all right. But you haven't. You didn't say it anyway. <laughs> actually won two at Warwick. Probably. Well, there you go. What did That's you what be, you got to beat. You could be the basketball reporter. Oh, fantasy basketball. Give me a spell, Raj. Leighton Goldsworthy. Back chat roving. Golf reporter. Hey, lads. Oh, big fan of the show. Couldn't help hearing that the mighty back chat pod is chasing roving reporters of all sports. Weird mm. and wonderful. Well, let me give you a quick insight into the suddenly wild world of pro golf. So we've had an NHL uh, correspondent correspondent yeah. last week. I think we've given him the job. He, he and that his name was Leighton. Leighton. Or no, this is Leighton. Elliot. 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 This is Leighton, mate. Keep yes. up. <laughs> Elliot is our NHL reporter and gave us a bit of a snapshot of NHL. Is I know nothing his, about is it. Is his last name Gretzky? <laughs> that would certainly help Elliot's cause. <laughs> his first name's Elliot, so no, not Gretzky. Not Wayne. Go. Mm. Okay, uh, here we go. After being the monopoly of pro golf for decades, which led to the professional game being extremely US-centric, the PGA Tour now has some serious competition from the new LIV Golf Tour. Live, Live Golf? Yes, it does. It certainly does. Dustin uh, Johnson, $30 million. Headed up by our own Greg Norman, the Live mm -hmm. Golf Tour, backed by the Saudi government, has provided a seemingly infinite budget to take on the PGA Tour and since starting earlier this year has poached some of the world's best players, including recent British Open champ Cam Smith, for a reported million. cool $140 million guarantee. Oh, the sudden influx 20. of guaranteed money into a sport which has always been based on you win, you get paid, has thrown the game into absolute turmoil. Yes, okay. well With done. players secretly doing deals to join the league and negotiating who a uh, huge contracts the pga tour <laughs> is now scrambling to ban these players and attempt to raise its prize money which has only gone on to dilute their own product yeah this has led to the stuffy golf elites condemning the live tour and doing everything within their power to delete these players and ban them from playing in the major tournaments mm -hmm. the masters etc essentially this is reminiscent of the pro wrestling war between wwf and wcw i remember this in the 90s oh, yeah. or the world series evolution of cricket with rumors constantly swirling yes. of who will be the next to jump ship yeah this is just a very quick brief insight into the current pro golf pro golf war which is going down right now with many more hilarious subplots popping up including greg norman going to u.s congress and getting completely shut down <laughs> and two live golf players sitting in a car outside a pga tournament being refused entry with some biff almost going down what? with the game picking up in popularity worldwide in australia finally setting to host its ma a first major pro golf event in three years this summer um, happy to provide insights and on the ground coverage of the gentleman's game. I'm sure the local pros from WA and the rest of Australia would appreciate some love from back chat. Cheers, lads. Oh, I can't fault it. Oh, I love Leighton. Where does he live, first of all? <laughs> Poor, could be Leighton. Is he a, is he a Melbourne based? It sounds like WA. No, golf reporter. Sounds WA ish. Melbourne would help him because we've got some tremendous courses there, myself being a member of the Royal Melbourne Golf Club, uh, top, <laughs> top 10 in the world. But uh, anyway, um, who oh, paid yeah, you tremendous. Uh, live Golf has gone bananas. I saw a thing today on Dustin Johnson. From his time in the Live Tour, he has made $94,500 per hole that he's played. Ooh, wow. Which is just stupid. And so for a guy like, he came out a couple of weeks ago and said, I want to play less tournaments. I want to spend more time with my family. He's made $30 million prize money already. Like that's the amount of money these oil, oil stealing Saudis are pumping into the Live Tour is just so, phenomenal. So is it, is it actually, have they actually banned them from the... Yeah, well, they're, what they're trying to do, they've banned them from all other PGA Tour events, but what they've got is if you've won a major championship, you have exemption to play in that tournament, I almost think forever. I think there's, Fred right. Couples has been playing the Masters for 32 years. As, so you don't need to qualify. You don't need to qualify. Just you just get exemption right. having won a, to a major tournament. And I think... They're trying to – that's an unwritten rule of golf, or actually it is written, but they're trying to scruff that out now that you – if you're in the live tour, you can't come back. But, wow. but guys but there's now, winners there's like winners Cam Smith, right? Cam Smith, he's won the British Open. He should be able to play in the British Open forever, but signed a $140 million. And is there a major coming to Australia? Is that, is that well, – That's what I read. Well, that's what I've heard you just read out. <laughs> I don't know about well, that. Well, Leighton, I'm going to be honest. I think we found our – 
Roving uh, Gosling. No, no, I'm no, going to no, be honest. I was, shit, yeah, I was loving Leighton's report. Leighton, very good. You hired Leighton, you fucking hired. Uh, there you go. That's our that's our roaming cast right now. Our roving back chat cabinet. Leighton Goldsworthy Golf. Raj Ruperiela. Cricket. Not so, basketball shit outs, Raj. Joe <laughs> Kenny, roaming back chat Melbourne and Elliot Friedman, NHL. If you'd like to apply for a sport that hasn't been listed, go right ahead. Send if us you, an email. If you, were, if you were to apply for one sport, what would yours be? Me? Yeah. Other than AFL? Obviously. NFL. NFL. You're a big NFL guy. Big big enough. But I mean, my pitch wouldn't be as good as these guys. It's been very good. F1, maybe. F1, maybe. You? Don't know. I don't think I'd have another you one. You sound like the, 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 the stuff oh, I love you off about chess. Yeah. I'm a chess guy, yeah. <laughs> well, I do enjoy my chess, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a finger on the pulse for chess. All right. This one's F1 shithousery from Eddie. Go on. From Eddie. <laughs> No, no, no. Energy. Yeah, energy. Hey, boys. I've been a faithful listener for some time now and love the show. Loving the fact I can get an entertaining look at all sports. I love in the one place. The basketball pod is a game changer. You just made that up, haven't you? (laughs) That's there. Dan's a bit like that, doesn't he? Basketball pod is a game changer. You've uh, said that twice. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, what? You lost where you are? The basketball point is a game changer. And looking, mm. to, uh, looking forward to more episodes of that <laughs> every Wednesday. Heard the pod on cheating last week and uh, know you boys have been doing a bit of F1. This is a big email, by the way. To Europe. Mm. This got me thinking and I thought I'd mention a little bit of shit that's going on in the F1 world at the moment with old mates Red Bull that has a little bit of cheating and a little bit of shithousery by the FIA themselves all wrapped up in a neat little story. Uh, those who, who listen to the podcast, the FIA are the guys that give the accreditations out for media. So the FIA, I'm not a big fan, to be honest. Yes, I right. went through their shithousery to get through, you know, slight amount of accreditation to get ourselves over there. So for the, all the whinging I did about that, it's the FIA as well. Okay. Essentially, a few weeks ago, there were rumours of Red Bull basically taking the relatively new concept of a salary cap in the F1 wiping their ass with it and throwing it into the bin by overspending by a considerable considerable amount. Yes. Why the uproar? Well, given the way last year's season ended with Max winning a championship in very in commas, mm-hmm. um, it could be seen that this overspend has given them a crucial advantage. It's been said £1 million equates to one-tenth of a second in F1 and they're reportedly in the 5 to £10 million pound range. Wow. Um, that may have kept them close enough in the championship to reap the rewards of dipshit Michael Massey's decision <laughs> in Abu Dhabi to finish the race. I'm mm. a Michael Massey guy, by the way. Following I'm along. a fan of him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, side note, for those that don't know about the final race in Abu Dhabi, both Lewis and Max were tied in championship points going into the race, with the winner of the race also walking away with the world championship. Lewis led all race, but towards the end was denied a record-breaking eighth world title and one of the biggest screw jobs in sporting history. It was bad. In AFL all terms, imagine the it? recent grand final with Sydney getting pants by the umpire blowing the whistle with about one minute to go and saying, all right, boys, yeah. we're going to make the scores equal Restart now. Restart it. And play out the next minute, whoever's leading at the end of the winning <laughs> the flag. <laughs> that was That's a good example. Yeah. That's exactly Oh, right. and all of Geelong can take their footy boots and Buddy, uh, take off their footy boots and Buddy has a 10-minute exclusion zone around That's him. a metre, mate. 10, ten metre. Ten what did I say? 10 minute. minute. Continue. Could be both. You're reading well. Mm. F1 were meant to t- make a statement last Wednesday. Is this all in the one email? This is huge, yeah. <laughs> Mate, you said it, we read it. Hello, <laughs> backchatpodcast.com. You, you do you it. send it. We do read it. Yeah, thank you. F1 were meant to make a statement last Wednesday about the salary crap, a uh, salary cap yeah, breach. Also known as the salary crap. <laughs> but mm. then put off the decision until this Monday following the Japanese GP. Uh, read what you want into this, but there is a line of thinking that this was delayed so as not to tarnish another one of good old Max Verstappen's championship Sound days like big as he was in line to and eventually did in another shit show win the championship this year. It has since come out that Red Bull did indeed the bre- uh, did indeed breach the, sk- the salary cap and now the FIA are deciding upon a proper punishment. This also gets interesting as there is a firm there is firm ground to deduct championship championship points from last season. Dan fatiguing. Dan fatiguing. <laughs> yeah, come on downhill fast. <laughs> Uh, from last year, meaning Lewis could retrospectively be awarded the title. However, the FIA, who to be fair could not organise a route in a brothel in yeah, recent years, yeah. are likely not to do this and rather opt to give Red Bull an 8.5... No, $8.50. $8.50, fine. While Taking the piece out of the FIA. Christian Horner a rub under the table, shit house. Anywho, boys, just thought I'd share and hope the above might put me in consideration to be one of the Backchat F1 correspondents. Oh, shit, Eddie, I'm you good are. good with the facts, but... N- by no means a stat guy and put a big emphasis on talking shit. Pretty all right with yeah, the NBA, yeah, obviously. NFL and MLB, which we haven't had yet. 
knowledge, but having three kids has left me slightly out of the loop now, so we'll leave that to you, lads. I've got to be Cheers honest, boys. Eddie, on that on yeah. that final point, you've got three kids and you're spitting out an email like that. Oh, bloody hats off to you. Oh, yeah, that's a lot I'm, of detail there. But this, this Eddie, take Eddie out of it. A person had to, had to sit down and yep. write a big email like that, yeah. so we appreciate it. We do appreciate it. Uh, if... Eddie wants to be the correspondent. Yes. He probably needs to be a little bit more succinct than that. Yeah. Eddie, that's uh, <laughs> we went a, lot we went of a real straight line. Bit of a bit of a up, just a bit of a wrap. Yeah, a wrap, exactly. Okay. Yep. But uh, I like the information. Eddie, you're hired. F1 is yours. Well done. <laughs> done. Hired. Blake, swap. Hey guys, love the podcast. I've been an Eagles supporter since I was five. I'm going to try to smash through this. I. I have about Do five you want me to read or are you no, no, no. And, and I rotate through them all. I wear them every single day, including when I go to restaurants, Jesus. <laughs> when I go to restaurants, shops, beaches, and pretty much everywhere else I go. I even sleep in them. Mm-hmm. With Eagles performance this year and all the looks I get from people, I never stop wearing the jerseys. I'm just wondering if this is some kind of record, and if so, should I be rewarded? LOL. I also have a photo I also have photo evidence to back it all up. Cheers and keep up the great work. Hamish, reaction? He didn't drop an LOL in there, did he? Yeah, lol. Goodness gracious me. <laughs> what, you've said that you shouldn't be wearing jerseys around unless you're shouldn't 10 years old. Should be wearing jerseys Blake, around in unless fairness, you're 10. Blake could be 10. Every single day. Well, Blake could be 10. He, he has dropped an LOL. He could easily be 10. He could easily be. So, this is so let me hold my tongue a little bit. But oh, Cheapest creepers. I'll, uh, yeah, good on you, Blake. <laughs> my God. <laughs> Charlie, what's the next on the agenda? Yes. The trail pale was fantastic. Was it? Probably my favourite of the bunch okay. thus far. Very 1.8 standard drinks. Shelter, what's up? Michael Willoughby. Willoughby. Uh, yes. Uh, hello, Will, Dan and Charlie and Hammer. And Damo. And Damo. I was on a quest for the perfect flat white on a gorgeous Perth spring day, not yes, a cloud in sight. This Hammer's sounds like a story. A pale ale. It's a good one. There's a humpback whale on the back of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's get back to Michael on both of it. Um, I pull up to the Loftus Street lights. It's noted Dan territory where I see a homeless man starting to offer to wash windows. Being the polite man I am, I wave him off as I have no cash to offer. I witness the car behind me take the offer for a window clean and then proceed to wave the poor homeless man off without offering him money for his services. That's rough. I take a closer look and I notice it's Dan behind me. Dan who? You. It just says Dan. We don't know who that is. I got a little excited. Back chats Dan is out frolicking in Perth on this wonderful day. However, just before the light turns green, I hear an aggressive beep. At this stage, I'm frazzled. It's a left turn, but the arrow is still red. Beep again. Now it's turned green, but I'm like a deer in the headlights. Before I take off, leaving him in my dust, still frazzled, I turn behind to see that Dan is in hot pursuit. <laughs> I see the next set of lights turn orange. Oh no, I think to myself, do I run the red? Pussy. I choose not to. I began pulling up and I see Dan through my mirror, hand hovering over the steering wheel, ready to blast me again. It sounds like you. The light turns green. I take off like an F1 in my Hyundai, but not quick enough for Dan. Beep, he goes. (laughs) With my tail between my legs, I turn off as quick as possible. I eventually get to my destination, the coffee shop. I am shook and take time to reflect on the ordeal. Anyway, my flat white was mediocre and now have PTSD. Thanks, Dan. Yours faithfully, Michael. Did Jonathan. you not pay a homeless bloke for watching the windows? <laughs> now, before you answer... That is horrendous. I need to tell a story about this email. This was in our trash. This had been received okay, in our email. Here it's a shared. It's a shared group email, so Charlie mm-hmm. has access, I have access, Dan has access. Of course. It would have been deleted. Understood. Found in trash by me. Oh, <laughs> Found in trash by me. I'll continue along. Obviously, yeah. I said, Dan, did you put this in here? Because I wouldn't have put it in here. Who right? You send it. We read it. That's how it rolls. Dan proceeds to read it. Reads halfway through. Says, I've oh, never this seen this before. Lying. I said, read it out on the show. He then continues to read it before the show. So he's not going to stuff it up on the show. He gets to the bottom. And I kid you not, before this show starts, Dan goes, I actually, like, I know it's like people writing jokes about me, but I actually think this could be real. Did that or did that not happen? There's some truth to the to the story in that that intersection I frequent daily. Yes. Okay. You beep daily. Do beep daily. Um, Do you beep? What, is, what does beeping accomplish? <laughs> He's a beeper. Teaches him a lesson. Oh, hang on a minute. Why? How? Let's know. Some... Okay. Mate, well, pick I, your game up. Personally, as a driver mm-hmm. on the WA roads, <laughs> if I have been beeped in my life as a Perth citizen, I reckon I've been beeped four times for being a bit slow at the lights. And every time I've been beeped, I just sit there. <laughs> I hate it. Someone beeps you. Okay. 
I get it. I know the light's green. Yep. But like, if I've if I'm looking at my phone, which I haven't, you don't. I don't. I'm ready and attentive. The beeps that I've got are like the light turns green, beep. Fuck off, mate. I'm just it's gonna probably sit Dan. It's exactly. probably Dan. I will say, well, if you've ever seen a Mazda BT50 sit there, we'll have a stand and off. laugh at you. I will be beeping. That's me. You'll be. Standing I'll be waiting right. until the light is orange. Amber, sorry. Sorry, boys. We're going to keep wait, moving. Go. Fines, Dean wait, before Bradley. Before we get there, do we need to? Um, there is one more email that we haven't got to yet that just wasn't on there because uh, for some reason someone didn't put it on there. Shivers. Right. When you say someone, you mean you? Yep. Um, we got a video sent through. Hammer, I'm just oh, going to need you to um, respond mm-hmm. to it. Okay. Understood. Let's watch it. Uh, let's have a look here. Gukesh D. <laughs> Hello, Who's this? Uh, He's holding a fillet of fish. Fair. So eating fillet of fish, Hawthorne jumpers in the background. Guitar, guitar enthusiast. Thinking about fillet of fish. Thinking long and hard, actually. Mm-hmm. This is studying it. <laughs> What's happening? Why do I like it? Oh no. No, 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 no. no, no. Oh. <laughs> Got a bit. Is he wearing a three-quarter length t-shirt? <laughs> No. Pause it. No, no fines for Dan He's <laughs> wearing a three-quarter length shirt, firstly. <laughs> Second of all, fillet of fish. Wipe that. Just yeah, he's got leaving, a little bit saving left Saving a little over. bit for later. And thirdly, that is bullshit. They are fucking atrocious, the fillet of fish. <laughs> bullshit. It was a pleasant surprise. Yeah. My ass, it was a fucking pleasant surprise. You are kidding yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is nah. No, 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 no. Thank no. you, Dun and Dustin. Hello at backjackpodcast.com.au. Uh, We're going to keep moving, Hamish. People are listening to this show, would you believe? Fines. Dean Bradley, local real estate man, uh, inner western suburbs. That's what he looks after. Leaderville, Mount Hawthorne, Wembley. He's now with Ray White Real Estate. You can find him on socials, Dean Bradley underscore Ray White or deanbradley.com. So Dino sponsors the fines edition and the segment here on Backchat. He matches every dollar that we raise through our fines. You put in a fine, just like the fines at the footy, sh- uh, footy, footy club, club Amish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the fines, though, are paid by us. So you can find anyone. You can find your mum, your dad, your partner, us sure. on the show. If we do something wrong, pick us up. You know, that fine. sort of stuff. What, what was that bloke's name? Uh, uh, that was... Um, Huntsman. That was the Huntsman. The Huntsman. Well, you, you had to find he threw out the fi- your fillet of fish. My yeah, ass. correct. Oh, $5. Shit, so we pay it. Dino matches it. Uh, I will say, I've been throwing out at the top of this about blood mm-hmm. donations. So this is for my brother, Jace, uh, who is has been diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia. He's trying to get 1,000 new blood donors to sign up to his team, Team Long Live Jace Nelson. I signed mm-hmm. up today. Uh, I also did. And we're going down to the Blood Donation Centre in Perth. 1 p.m. Have you done it blood before? I have not. I've never done it before either. And so uh, my brother. I sort enjoy of weirdly enjoy watching the blood come out of me when I'm getting blood tests. <laughs> do you? Yeah, strange. I just like look at it, and the lady, Ugh. the people who do it, the lady, the last time I did it, the lady was like, "Oh, look away if it's a little bit squeamish." And I said, oh, "I enjoy it." And so she was like, well, "Sorry, I, well, said, oh, I like watching it come well, out." We're, well, that's weird. I don't think anyone <laughs> feels like that. But we're <laughs> heading down to the donation centre. Dean Bradley is coming with us. Huge. Big Dino will be down there with us. Uh, Yeah, we're going to be there 1pm Friday. Don't come down. It's probably not appropriate, but (laughs) we will be doing it. And if you want to sign up, you can sign up on Lifeblood. So my.donateblood.com.au. 1pm Friday. Use Team Long Live Jace Nelson. Um, That's when we've booked in, 1pm Friday. First time I've ever donated blood. Same. I'll be there. Hey Hamish. I've got nothing else to do on a Friday at 1 p.m. Very good. We're signing Hamish up. Sign up for yourself as well. Now, mm-hmm. uh, our other charities are Men's Talk, Sabre, and Socket 2 Sarcoma. Let's get into it. Fines in session. That's right. You like this, bad boy? Yeah, I do. The Dave Smith designs by Dave Smith. Uh, How do you know that's by Dave Smith? Dave Smith. I, I was a. That is correct. It is correct. I was a. Uh, I was a host son at uh, Judy and Richard Smirk's house, whose daughter Sally. Is uh, now the fiance of Dave Smith, so I've got a cu- I've got a bottle opener at home that uh, is basically the end of this with a little bottle opener at the top. Oh, you're ruining the exclusivity a little yeah, bit. No, I, uh, I paid good money for it. Thank you very much, Dave. But uh, no, he does this in his spare time after teaching woodwork. There you there go. We love that. We do like you for a reason. Now mm. let's get into it. This is like a fine session we do at the footy club. Hamish, so you'll understand how this works. Sean Von Dutch finds Dan. We love it. One dollar. For saying England lost due to Wade's cheating when they won, 
cue up vision of poor Wadey crying on the boundary after getting out right at the end. Talk about kicking a man while he's Don't down. Have Don't have vision, understood. So. Dollar for you, Dan. Um, dollar shit, that's you. you can have that. Top Sean Von Darchi's doubled up. He finds himself a dollar for the fact that every time I yelled six at the cricket, the Australian batsman got out. I yelled it seven times and we lost seven wickets, essentially causing Australia to lose to England. A dollar, have make it two. No, okay, fair enough. Nick Lowry, big finer on this program, finds Dan Cons. I've got to be honest, I'm scrolling down. There's a lot of Dan Cons. Why? Because I asked for it last week, I believe. Two dollars, pressing wrong button. That's yep. it. Ben Sprott. Sproat Dan $2 fine For saying England lost The T20 against Australia They won dickhead <laughs> Daniel Flanagan Dan $2.50 For saying that England Lost the T20 <laughs> match In Perth They lost mate Wade blocked the bowler From running in To take a catch England won by 8 runs You ignoramus <laughs> Enjoy. And the $2.50 too, I like the specificity. Absolutely. Very good. Come on, Dan. Represent us Dan's better. That's mm-hmm. from uh, Daniel Funningham. Fair enough, Dan. This is from Jack Me Off. <laughs> <laughs> you can Great. specify your name on the phone. Mr. Me Off, I enjoy yes, that. Yes, Mr. Me Off. Jack Me Off says, Dan, $2.50. <laughs> fine. After being directly, I don't care what it is. Well direct, done. directly told by a superior to ensure a new and improved intro song. Superior man. Oh, F. Current one has run its race, buddy. No, Jack is me at the start of the episode. This has not been a completed. Two dollar per episode. The old intro is in place. Fine to be enacted retrospectively for all episodes since initial directive from Scoey. That's Which is great. how much dollars? Directive. Obviously not short on time if he's been able to put an NBA <laughs> podcast together. Get your priorities in order, please, champion. Wow. The champion adds an extra <laughs> little bit. Firm regards, Jack me off. <laughs> Jack. It's very good. That's as good as it gets. <laughs> That's I'm excellent. sorry. Put your money that in, That is mate. excellent. There are no Jack. rebuttals either. Nah, zero rebuttals. I like that about a court. Richard Newen. Dick Newen writes in. It could be actually just... What? <laughs> what? What? I'm just waiting. They call people... Yeah, well, I they understand. My, people... pop, my pop had a mate called Richard Head. No, he didn't. Promise you no. he did. Dick Head. Promise you he did. Richard Head. This Dick was Head. back in the... Did they call him 50s? Dick or not? No, they called him Dick, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Yeah. Uh, they find Skeet Mike. Oh no, they, no, sorry, Michael. I got another funny name to tell you after this. Michael Skeet Zampogna gets a five dollar fine in our AFL fantasy keepers league. Skeet finished first and was looking in a flag. Um, mm-hmm. He drafted Dom Sheed and held him all year. Very bad return as Dom only played one game. Skeet went aggressive and traded Dom Sheed for Jack Reddin. He ended up losing his grand final as Cam Guthrie was his captain against the Eagles and Cam copped a hit to the shoulder. Sat out for the rest of the game, not even subbed. To make matters worse, Jack Reddin retires out of nowhere and now he has no Sheed, no Reddin. RIP Skeet. Good. Stiff Skeet. Jeff Albertson. Hang on a minute. That's all in your moustache. <laughs> yep, that is everywhere in there. <laughs> Save yeah. it, saving that for later. Have a look at <laughs> Yeah, much better. Okay, thank you. Oh, God. <sighs> Jeff Albertson, the AFL, $100. <sighs> Shit, Jeff. Uh, Should we give you a little context to this? Wait, haven't we already done this? Uh, yes, but this is the... So, okay, let me explain. Jack, uh, sorry, Jeff, not Jack. Jeff Albertson tried to contact the AFL to find some footage from a 2006 game between West Coast and Adelaide. Mm -hmm. They said, sure, if you'd like the game, it's going to cost you $100. Stiff shit. Very. So this is now, he fined them originally for that money and now he's come back to us. Right. This fine is for the AFL having the audacity to ask $100 for one match of football. This is regarding to you guys trying to find around 17 West Coast for Adelaide. Well, you guys are in luck. I'm an Adelaide Crows fan, part of the Crowject podcast, who collects footage of Crows matches, and I've recently got a VHF, VHS copy of said game. Well done, So Jeff. I've converted it for you to see Nathan Bassett in full Backman mode. Apologies for the potato quality. It's the best I could do. And he sent us a YouTube link. Have we got the footage? Uh, that's what I said to you. It's like a two and a half hour Dan, video. I have a memory. I'm, you've told me this. I'm <laughs> stitching you up. It's fine. Do we have the footage? We've got the footage. No, we've got the footage. You, as Jack Me Off had rightly pointed <laughs> out, You've just been putting together an NBA podcast. Oh. You've been spinning around, doing fuck yeah, all. Cop you two dollars fifty. That was a hundred dollar <laughs> fine. That one actually. Courtesy of Jack me off, but okay. uh, yeah, I have cop that. Moment. You got a funnier name? Have you another funny name? Uh, <laughs> my, my uncle went to school with a guy whose last name was Koshied. Koshied, spelt C O C K H E A D. Koshied. 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 Cockhead. And. Uh, <laughs> 
Perry Cockhead was the guy you went to school with, and uh, that's uh, that, not too bad, mate. Yourself, Perry Cockhead, <laughs> but, uh, pronounced Cockhead. A little bit of humour in that. <laughs> Andrew Crabb. Dan doesn't find it funny. Mm. Dan, cops again, $2 for saying you lost the game. You're, you're an absolute yeah. muppet. I don't need to keep random out. Paul A, my wife, $9. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> in 2018, we travelled from the country to Perth to take our two-year-old son to see the Wiggles. The show happened to be on my birthday, and the morning of, my wife remembered we were seeing the Wiggles, but completely forgot it was my birthday mm. until, until we were just about to hop on the bus. We had been together nine years by then, so the fine is a dollar for every year. It was unbelievable scenes that have scarred me forever. And he's held onto it for a few years oh, before bet, outlaying a nine dollar fine. But you never let her forget ever, oh, ever. Why Paul. would you? Good on you, Paul. This is from Will's hairline. <laughs> <laughs> Something funny over there, Damo. About you, Charlie. Yeah, we'll funny. Yeah, yeah. Amy's the only one not laughing in here. Mm. This is uh, to the troubled train kid. Two dollars. I was on the Mandra train line home the other night and this kid who was sat across from me um, asked the time. I replied and then he asked where I was going. I said I was going home and getting off at Warnborough. I then asked where he was going. He said Perth. This is quite a detailed description of the conversation. I then proceeded to explain to him that he was going the wrong way and to get off at the next station and wait for the other train on the other side of the platform to come. He then got off the train and went up the escalator and exited the train station. One dollar for getting on the wrong train <laughs> and one dollar for exiting the train station. Thank you very there much. Ann L. Beads. Ann L. Beads? <laughs> <laughs> ah. Yes. <laughs> ah. I An see what you've done there. Ann L. Beads. There we go. <laughs> Who gets a fine? Hans Neiman, two dollars. It smells in there. <laughs> I enjoyed that. I'm a chess guy. Finds Master Apprentice. Big Kev. Here's the Big Kev update. $2.50. Last one. For the last few months, Big Kev has been bragging about his Uber prices always being the cheapest. I finally asked him if he had Uber Pass. His response was, what is that? Checked his bank statements and turns out he's been paying the monthly $10 Uber Pass fee for over a year now. Definitely a waste of money, seeing as though he might use subscriptions he was unaware of. Surprise, surprise, he has had an Audible subscription since December of last year as he wanted to read the Dune book after watching the movie. He never read it. Also found he has also been paying for Tinder Gold for three oh months, even though they deleted the app after a week. Every single one of these subscriptions he signed up for a free trial and simply forgot. Got that. That's oh. fine. Done and dusted. Did you enjoy banging that? I enjoyed banging that. Thank you very much, David Smith. Did you enjoy being oh, on Backchat? Shit. That's done. Oh, shit, yeah. Loved it. Done, dusted. You know what to do. Socials, Backchat, double underscore. Find everything we do, backchatpodcast.com.au. Um, our, our sponsors, our supporters, we thank you. Whippersnapper Whiskey, Mugger River Roasting Co., Blue Bet, Shelter Brewing Co., Leadable Cameras, Dean Bradley Real Estate, VIP, VIP codes for patrons over on Patreon. And if you'd like to keep listening, as Hamish gets through the next two beers, yep. you're going to have to be a patron because this oh, is the end of the episode, yet. but it's still going over at Patreon. Come on, big time. See you later.